the evolutionary development of the skeleton. Body support provided by water. The earliest forms of life evolved in the ocean. The fact that this is an aquatic environment is key. Water is about 1,000 times denser than air. The high density of water allows organisms to float due to a physical upward force inherent in liquid. Something floats in water. It's called buoyant. Um, and then, of course, we have buoyancy. And it's basically when even a ship goes on top of the water, we say it is buoyant, um, which means that it can float. If you go into the water and you take a dive into a tidal pool or even a normal swimming pool, you'll find that if you have breath, some oxygen or air into your lungs and you have it in your mouth and you hold it into your mouth and you, you try to go underwater, you can't because with that air you become buoyant. And if you exhale all the air, um, you'd notice that you'd start to sink and you'd go lower and lower as you release the air. So water is key here because for aquatic animals uh, it sometimes gives them um, a certain feature and makes them adapt in a certain way. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Um, aquatic animals. Look at this. Uh, this is a jellyfish. Um, it has some small tentacles here at the bottom. They used to capture prey and also feel and sense the environment around them. Uh, if you notice that it doesn't have eyes like how a human would have. Uh, some of them do have uh, different species have different features, but this one here doesn't look like it has any eyes here. So, being in such an environment, especially a few hundred meters below the surface, you, you can't notice or you can't see anything in water. For us humans, we need goggles or scuba diving equipment. But these jellyfish here, they, they don't require the sight of or the set, the eyeballs that we have. So they have other features that allow them to move or to go near prey. They feel the, uh, the, the prey around them. Like if a small fish had to come nearby, they'd catch it with the tentacles. They'll smear it with, their, with these tentacles, of course. Um, and probably put it through here. And that's where they normally feed from. Like normally they have a mouth inside here. And that sucks out all the nutrients, whether it be from plant or, or fish or even plankton. So it looks very delicate. Jellyfish is like, of course, jelly. Um, I use them and we use them for bait sometimes. Uh, and you cut small pieces and you put them in your hook. They're very soft. Um, not like squid, uh, like calamari. That's a bit hard, but as you can see, there are different species of them, but they're a bit softer than your regular calamari. They live in, in depth up to the bottom where you have the, the trench, the Mariana trench, where, um, one of the, or some of the scuba divers have been in, in like a small submarine. Um, there's someone who is called James Cameron and he's the director of a movie called Titanic and he had taken a submarine down to the Mariana Trench. It's one of the, apparently it's the deepest place in the ocean and you still have fish and other organisms like this living down there. Amazing. So you'd, so they adapt themselves and, and they, of course, um, they breathe air by different ducts, unlike our system where we need oxygen and we can't breathe in water like this. 
Okay, so by looking at the previous topic that we are discussing, hydrostatic skeleton, uh, I want you to look at the advantages and disadvantages of this type of structure. The first advantage I think would be Let's have a few seconds to think about that. Advantage for this type of structure. It has a circular body here. And the way it moves is that the, the inside or this part here, which serves as kind of the bottom part, like how we'd have our legs, I guess. But it goes in and then as it goes in here so it goes in here try this. it goes in there and then it comes out this way here again so this motion of course is it's almost like a jackhammer, that's a hammer that the people hold when they burst concrete or tar on the road. And that makes the motion for, for it to move. So it propels itself by, by either pushing this out and, or pushing it in. As you can see here. It allows them to move. Of course, in any direction, whether it be left, right or up or down because they are in water and it's uh, it floats in water a disadvantage this the easiest one would be is that they have a very gelatinous structure um, and being it and because it's so gelatinous you find other creatures like uh, squid and different types of fish. Let me draw the outline here. So, with different types of fish, uh, squid, sharks, uh, these types of creatures, um, they come and they just bite them. It's probably they. It's probably like cupcakes or like jelly for them. Like jelly for like how we would go to the fridge or the supermarket and buy some jelly or just make some jelly and eat it, stuff it down our throat. So this this jellyfish is probably like that for a shark or a whale. Going past the whale probably sees a jellyfish. There's no way that a jellyfish can outrun a shark. So the shark just eats it like probably like chewing gum. Okay. Here we have advantages and disadvantages hydrostatic skeleton we're going to cover three of them as discussed at the beginning so the first one we have a grid here a table showing you advantages and disadvantages um, we talked about them what would be a positive and a negative for this particular organism uh, so what I want you to do is write down at least three that you can think of here. You're going to put one, two, and three. You should be at least able to come up with at least two. Uh, but generally you should have, should try for three. The odd number out. Okay, so I want you to do this for homework. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next one. Over time, in order to refine movement and improve protection from predators, I'm sure you know what's a predator. We discussed this last week. Um, yes, of course, things that devour other animals. They sometimes eat vegetables as well, or grass or other stuff, but they are predators like like lions, they would eat certain types of grass near them simply to aid to aid their digestive tract. Um, sometimes you probably have maybe bones getting stuck in there because they're carnivores, so they eat 
um, some grass or maybe some leaves in there just to aid them, object them with the digestion, uh, just for that peristalsis. So to aid them with digesting the food further down into the tract, um, they require some kind of green uh, vegetable. Of course, all of these animals are different, their bodies are different, different um, towards or compared to humans. So, exoskeletons, we talked about that. Types of them include crustaceans like crabs and lobsters. Um, we call these anthropods, and some of them are ancient. They look very ancient, um, like the blue crab, the Alexia of the South Sea in Mexico. Um, they're huge crabs, absolutely huge crabs, and they have blue blooded, blue blooded. Reptiles um, or anthropods. Eventually, there were some animals that developed a skeletal structure internal to the body, which would become the vertebrate group of animals. These animals have an endoskeleton. Initially, all endoskeletons were made of cartilage, which is a dense rubber type of tissue. Um, cartilage is almost like, um, I'm sure you've eaten a quarter leg of chicken. The middle part that joins the two is cartilage. Um, later endoskeletons of bone evolved. And here you have an anthropod, a huge one. Uh, this is called a blue crab. Or ghost crab. I think it's called a ghost crab. Uh, you find these on islands in the South Pacific, but as you can see, they are huge. They've been really nice, and you can see there's coconuts here. Let's go. Um, they probably drink the coconut uh, water from there. I'm not too sure if they eat them. They could possibly eat them high in protein. Um, I think they do eat them. That's why they grow so huge as well. Um, you could probably feed like two, three people, like definitely three, four people with that one. And the, each person can just have one leg. Um, very, very huge. Uh, I think these crabs eat birds as well. Um, so even if they have these coconut vultures that come there to eat the coconut, you find that these birds probably like prey on them, like sabotage them, uh, jump on them. I don't think they would jump on them, but probably hide close in a bush. And as soon as they come, they probably get them. They pick pincers. Uh, crab is tasty. Some people don't eat fish. I'm not sure for, uh, probably for their own reason, of course. Um, but it's good to try everything. Okay, so I want you to again look at this here, and we have exoskeleton with advantages and disadvantages. I'm just going to go run back this one here, and just look at some of the notes that we've discussed. Um, we're talking about crabs and lobsters, and then I'm going to go back to this picture. The advantage of this one here would be, of course, very hard outer shell. Um, it has pincers for its defense as well. If we have to look at one disadvantage, it's so mechanized almost that you can't even look at a disadvantage. It looks so like devilish, almost evil, like if it was in front of you, you wouldn't have a chance if it was your size. I'm going to say 
the disadvantage would be